us for tuning in to the PHNX Coyotes podcast, or as it is today, the PHNX Sun Devils show. Sorry, Totri and Shane. Um, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a five-star review. And we are here with PD, Craig, and Sean, as per usual. But we are very excited to welcome in a, re- a reoccurring guest, but first time in our downtown Phoenix studio. ASU Hockey head coach Greg Powers, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. These are really nice digs. I'm I'm jealous you get to come here to work every day. It's it's, it's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah, and, and I know where you go to work every day because we've been to the mullet, and apparently they've added a suntan booth just yeah. outside the gym because yeah. you're ripped and you're tan. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know if I'm tan. I'm I certainly not ripped, buddy. I think so. You've been <laughs> using uh, that gym. PD, I appreciate. I am using the gym. I can tell. It's five feet from it my shows. office. I have no excuse. It shows. Right. So I can we get it. a? That's what we need. We have a gym. Oh. It's on the second floor. <laughs> Shit. I thought I had an ex- <laughs> literally thought I had an excuse. <laughs> oh, buddy. Oh, Anything boy. else you want to get off your chest? Please? No, I just <laughs> I just want to get when he walked in. He's yeah. fit. He's, he's in his playing weight right now. He's yeah. ready to go. <laughs> ready to go. Let's ready go. To go. Oh, More goalies, oh, Leah. <laughs> oh, I know. It's More always, goalies. It's always me and three goalies somehow. But anyway, go let's kick it off. You and I have talked about this, but it has been a it has been a wild off season for this yeah, program. Yeah, it has. have you have you come up for air yet? It, you know, um, <laughs> I haven't. But but it's been it's been such a productive off season that. Uh, and we we've done so many I think great things with our program that we are so excited to get to work. You know, and August really marks that time where it's time to, to to hunker down and prep and and get ready for the season. We'll check these boxes one by one, but the big one, the last piece of the foundation, as you and I have talked about, yeah. you joined a conference. Yeah, and I know you've been wanting this for a while. With with all the uncertainty swirling <laughs> around ASU right now in terms of conference alignment, how nice does it feel to know? that you are going to be in the NCHC after one more season. It's incredible. You know, just just from a, I mean, a, a lion's share of my job, believe it or not, has been trying to piece together a schedule every year, right? And as an independent, you 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 get kind of everybody's last pick and you're, you're a fill-in here and a fill-in there. Um, and it's not easy. It's not easy to piece together a 34 to 38 game independent schedule. But now we have 24 games given to us every year. It's the best league in college hockey. We know it's going to be a tremendous challenge, one that we're excited to take on. Um, and I have to schedule 10 games, you know, so that's a huge right. piece of my wow. job that yeah. instead of 10, instead of 34 is much, much, much easier and uh, will allow me to focus my efforts uh, to more important things. And we're excited for that. One more follow from me before I allow PD and Leah to speak. Well, maybe Leah. <laughs> um, <laughs> joining a change. conference, you mentioned part of the scheduling, but you had you had some games scheduled out for a couple of years, right? So you yeah. had a... You got to finagle some things, right? So I want to talk about that. I want to talk about how it impacts recruiting, how it impacts postseason opportunities, which I know is a big thing to you. Yeah. So scheduling wise, you know, to to obviously we had a a full schedule pretty much complete for the 24, 25 season. So when you get 24 league games plopped on your your lap and and you had 24 games to replace, right? 24 games to move out um, into future years. And most coaches, most programs have been completely. Uh, understanding and supportive and and some games get moved out two three years to make room for everything but we're honoring our contracts we're honoring every game that we had played for that season whether it's we kept it we're able to keep it for next year or move it into future years and and we're really close to to pretty much having that complete you know as far as what it means from a competition standpoint a mindset standpoint for our guys is huge it's it's been it's been a great going into our eighth full season kind of uh first you know chapter of NCAA mm-hmm. hockey at ASU as an independent um with two tournament qualifications and we're hoping for a third this year to end on a high note um but the last month and a half of a season when you're independent and and you don't have a championship to play yeah. for and your pairwise ranking is is in a place where you know you're probably not going to get in it's hard keeping young men motivated it's hard Right. It's a long season. It's mm-hmm. the longest season out of all college team sports. So when there's no light at the end of the tunnel and they don't feel like there's a real championship to play for, it's tough. And to have that, you're never out of it. You're always in the fight in the league. You look at Colorado College last year in the league that we're joining. They had 10 regular season wins. We actually swept them at Mullet um, and, and they got hot at the right time. They go to Western Michigan. They, they win the series. They go to the frozen face off. They win their semi and they lost by a goal in the championship to Denver. So they were a goal away from getting hot at the right time and making a run and qualifying for the NCAA mm-hmm. tournament. A team like Colgate, who uh, we, we, we hired their associate coach, got hot, won the ECAC, made the tournament. So 
you always have that light at the end of the tunnel to kind of grasp for it. We're excited for it. I look at the conference too, and I got a couple of things when I look at the conference. And, and, and I agree that we talked about this before, that this is the premier conference in, in college hockey right now. They've won five of the last seven national championships. It is competitive. Yeah. And do you think when you put boots on the ground 24, 25, you guys will be competitive? Or what does that landscape look like where you think you're competing against the teams in that conference? Well, I think uh, we obviously need to now you know, recruit at an entirely new level. We expect to with the new arena, the new staff, um, which I'm sure we'll get into in a minute. So mm -hmm. do we do we know we have to improve and do we know we have to continue to, to kind of climb the, the mountain, so to speak, to win that league? Absolutely. We're not there yet. But um, we, we can draw on really positive experiences. Last year, sweeping a Colorado college, beating a North Dakota um, up in Vegas. So we have competed and had success against the top teams in that league. Now it's it's every weekend there's no nights off you know, mindset, so to speak. And it's, it's going to be a fun adjustment for us. We see this in, in with the other sports at, at ASU and U of A right now talking about conference realignment. You, you, you want to build those nat natural rivalries. It's, it's great yeah. for every sport. Do you see a, a horizon or a future where there are more teams in the Southwest trying to get into NCAA hockey? Yeah, we hope, you know, we hope, you know, I think that, that, the, the, the major domino that had happened was us getting all at arena. And and generating the revenue that we did last year, we were second in college hockey in the country in ticket wow. revenue, almost three point wow. two million in ticket revenue, only behind North Dakota, who seats eleven thousand. So, you know, the the theory is in my mind, and I'm biased because it works at ASU now, and it's a revenue sport. Is if we can do it, why can't Washington do it? Why can't Oregon do it? Why can't Utah do it? Why can't Colorado do it? You know, and um you and it doesn't it, it, the list goes on and on if we can make it a revenue sport here it can be a revenue sport anywhere on the west coast yeah. one more question on the conference um in terms of recruiting how does it impact a recruiting i don't know if it gives you like a a greater profile simply yeah. being in the conference but you also had at least early uh you know when you're an independent you can market to all these different areas of yeah. the country you can sell your product you won't get as much of that opportunity now when you have to play a conference schedule so i'm just curious of the impact on well, the impact is we've already felt it in a major majorly positive way um you know the kids want to compete for a championship uh they want to know what they're getting into uh the independent schedule is is it's different every year right you, you, it's a mixed bag you, you almost have to take what you can get in a lot of ways from an independent scheduling standpoint with you know, having a, a championship to play for, like I said, is what kids want. It's it's they all have advisors, you know, and 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 advisors like knowing that sending elite level talent into a program that is going to compete at the highest level and prepare kids for professional hockey after college is huge. Um, and and now we have every box checked. We have a great staff. Mm -hmm. We have the arena. We have a league, and uh, we're ready to turn the page and kind of go into that next chapter of our program. Let's pivot to talking about your new staff, obviously, um, adding some new hires, Dana and Albie. What will they bring to the table? How did they land here in Tempe yeah. and, and what will everyone's roles look like? Sure. It, they're, they're two tremendous additions. Dana, as we speak, is on the Five Nation staff for mm -hmm. USA Hockey over in the Czech Republic. Um, so he's a, he's a very highly thought of young coach. He's 33. He was the associate head coach for seven years at Colgate essentially ran the program, you know, and, 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 uh, did really everything. Um, and, and he is a great communicator. He's great with the players. His focus is going to be primarily individual player development. And that also extends further beyond just the guys we have in our locker room. We want to treat his job almost like an NHL development coach where he's going out and he's sitting down and seeing the guys that we have committed to our program and he's having lunch with them or coffee with them and talking with them and building that relationship and strengthening that bond between our program and our committed players. So he's really good at that. It's what he embraces and enjoys, and he's going to be a huge addition. He's a great recruiter. He's a great evaluator of talent. Um, and then Albie O'Connell has, has an incredible resume. I mean, from you know his playing days and his coaching days at BU, he's been in national championships. He's been to you know, handfuls of frozen fours as both a player and a coach. The BU team that that it is in existence list right now, the one that went to the frozen four last year, was 100% committed kids by Albie O'Connell. He is a great recruiter, an unbelievable talent evaluator, 
Um, the proof is in the pudding with the kids that he was able to attract the BU, whether it's Jack Eichel, Charlie McAvoy, Clayton Keller, the list goes on and on. And uh, he works at a different pace than we're used to from that standpoint. And it's been, it's just been a, a really good influx of energy and uh, and new ideas and, and new opportunities that these two have brought in. And we're excited to really get going with them here. What has that done for you? And I know, and I can only liken it to what I've experienced in an NHL locker room when a head coach makes changes underneath him and has different assistants mm-hmm. coming in. And it, it seems like it rejuvenates that head coach. Again. It's almost like starting over again. Yeah. Um, and I look at your days, you were doing everything by yourself, like literally everything yeah. by yourself. What's it like to have this group and what has it done for you coming into this season? It's completely re-energized me. Like you said, it, it's, it's a, I, I, I've never been as excited to get to work with a team and I'm always excited, but it's a different level of energy because of these two new guys for me. And we had the longest tenured staff in, in college hockey. It, we had eight years. It was the same, same exact staff. Mike Field did an unbelievable job. It was time to mix things up and bring in that new energy. And it's exactly what these guys have done. Um, Hicksy's obviously still with us, and um, and he he's enjoyed it. Um, but just just to have these two guys, the pace that they work at as good as they are at what they do has really allowed me to prepare, in my opinion, as a head coach from a hockey standpoint more than ever before. Um, And and because Albie's the kind of guy that essentially he's so good at what he does, it's almost just been here, take it, go get players. That's why I hired you. You're the best that there is in college hockey at it. And that's exactly what he's doing. I'm curious, what about ASU attracted them? I think for both of them, they, they they saw that we were able to to achieve a good amount of success as a very new program with limited resources. And and now we have, you know, the conference and the arena and they saw a blank canvas that 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 has a lot of paint left to to be done on it. Right. And and the, the upside is is limitless, you know, and, and these are two guys that come from history, um, you know, you know, programs that have been around for 100 plus years and have done everything, especially Albie at BU. And, mm. and uh, the one thing he doesn't have on his on his list is a national championship. And so he could have gone anywhere he wanted. You know, last year he was a scout with Montreal, but um, when the coach, the, the coaching addition, you know, on and everybody's staff was added, um, there's not a blue blood program that didn't reach out to him because they know how good he is at what he does. But he saw this as an opportunity to come here and, and really buy into our mantra, which is be the tradition and do things here that have never been done before. And that's what we tell the players. You can go to those blue blood programs and those traditional programs. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's great. But anything you go do there, it's already been done before. You come here, you can do things that have never been done before and, and be remembered for that. Excellent. Well, there's so much more to get into still. Um, before we do, I just want to remind everybody, if you haven't yet downloaded the BetMGM Sportsbook app. But, but Leah, when you today. say that, we really want them to do it. Yeah. Like, like it's just we're not, not just saying we're it. not just saying it. Like, <laughs> yeah, we're really strong arm them. Actually, really download the app out there. Okay, because there, there's so many perks. There's so many perks. I tell I feel like I talk about Well, I've won day. five of my last six bets on Bet MGM. So but let's say Look that's the biggest perk. Um, but here's here's the big perk right now. So you sign you download the app in your app store, Android, iPhone, whatever. You use the bonus code PHNX when you sign up, it says optional bonus code. code. Bonus code. You put in PHNX. Because this is what it gets you if you live in Arizona. Place your first bet offer and receive up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if it loses. What? There's so if I lose, I win? Yes. There's huh. there's no deal out there like it. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, and there's plenty to bet on on BetMGM. Of course, the MLB trade deadline is over. So you can look ahead at the second half of the MLB season. You got the Women's World Cup going on right now. And, of course, futures for the NHL. If you want to get those in, now is the time. So sign up, use the bonus code PHNX when you download the BetMGM app, place your first bet offer, receive up to $1,000 back in bonus bets. If it loses, check out our show notes for full details. And now you can listen to Shane talk about the disclaimer. Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Wyoming. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369, New York. Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus to wager. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, Arizona. 1-800-522-4700, Nevada. 1-800-BETS-OFF, Iowa. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help, Michigan. 1-800-981-0023, Puerto Rico. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. U.S. promotional offers not available in D.C., Kansas, Nevada, New York, or Ontario. 
So we had our staff meeting yesterday and to let everyone behind the curtain, we had like a 10 minute conversation in, in our PHNX staff meeting about our favorite Circle K snacks. Like that was a real thing that happened. That was it. Yeah, that was actually an agenda item. It was an agenda item. To show you item. how deep things get <laughs> at the PHNX meetings. Yeah. What and is your favorite Circle K Craig snack? Craig was really going for the donut sleeves. Yeah. I'm, I'm you know who was the man. most vocal? DePaz. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't even close. Like he, he literally pulled out a list. And he was like, well, yeah, yeah, but he has just, good ideas. Yeah, I didn't does. say his ideas were all. bad. He does. They were, they were. They no took Slim Jim. Yeah, we oh, had, no, oh Derek that was there. Did. Derek did. That was yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Circle K, they, they have so much stuff um, inside. So make sure next time you go and fuel up at Circle K, you head inside, grab a Polar Pop, grab a snack, and just make sure you're not missing out on all this great stuff. And right now you can text PHNX to 31310 to join their SMS subscriber club and get a buy one, get one free offer on 32 ounce polar pops we're just giving things away on this show every fantastic day, it feels like um, all right let's dive back in to asu hockey talk um we talked a lot about recruiting but not really in the in the details yet so just how are the efforts for 2024 coming along in terms of recruiting extremely well um like again having these two guys that are just absolute workhorses spearhead the recruiting uh, that have this fresh energy and, and and more reach really than we've ever had. And the relationships that a guy like Albie has established over his decade at BU um, has opened doors we've never had open. So, um, you know, we are extremely excited about next year's class, um, which is signed in November. We I can't state names until they're signed to an NLI, um, but it, it will absolutely be the highest ranked, deepest, um, you know, pool of, of prospects from a uh, potential, you know, professional career standpoint than we've ever had. Wow. Does this mean because you've got these guys too in recruiting that you get more beach time? <laughs> well, it's probably why you're so tan, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know what you're seeing tan wise, but um, well, I don't yeah, go outside. Maybe it's the longer beard. Maybe that's it. I do like yeah. the beard, though. That's fire. Yeah. I like it. My wife won't let me. Well, she won't let me trim it. She likes it. I so, like it. Yeah, I'm All just right. gonna go with it for now. All right, and I'm gonna stop Craig because I, I there's a question somebody in the in the chat brought up. Robert Lee said, "Are these paid scouts in colleges or assist?" Or is it just assistant coaches or regional connections doing the scouting? And I will go back to my dad, who was a college coach for a very long time. And it was the assistants and then the head coach. And, and it was your alumni. It's huge. Like, hey, yeah. I saw a kid from my hometown. Mm -hmm. You should really look at him. Do all of those things happen to you, too, here at ASU? They do. You, I mean, you, you have in the hockey world small, as you guys know. And you have people that support you and want to see you be successful. So, you, you know, the amount of people that have a player for you is endless, right? <laughs> yeah. It's almost too I got much. a guy. Yeah, yeah, I got a guy. You got to look at this guy. You got to look at this guy. But what college hockey did in adding a third paid assistant yeah. is so big because we were overworked and, and understaffed. You have you know, the coach to player ratio was extremely small when compared to sports like basketball and, and football. Um, so adding that one extra body that can get out on the road or the one extra guy that's because sometimes as a head coach, both guys are out recruiting and you're left to yourself to, to run a practice with 28 players, right? Which you can do, but it's not ideal, right? right? There's not much teaching that goes on when there's one coach to 28 guys or even two. So now that you add that third coach, the development across college hockey, I think will be even better than it was. And, and it's already a tremendous development model, as you know. But just that one extra resource, mm. not only for the players, but for the head coach is, is going to be huge. We've talked about this before. You lost Josh Stone. Yeah. And I mean, it, it's part of college hockey. It, it happens yeah. and you have to plan for it. How do you get to the point where you have a pipeline of two, three, four Josh Stones coming in every year? Yeah, I think we're close to that, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we were very fortunate to get Josh at the stage of our program that we did. Josh is, uh, as, as everybody knows, uh, part of an iconic family when, when we, as, as it relates to the sport in our community. And he, he wanted to come be a part of what be the tradition means. He could have gone anywhere he wanted. We were very fortunate to get him. Um, and we, we embraced and, and we'll always enjoy our time with him. Um, but we're, we're very close to that, that stage of the program. I think we're probably, because college hockey, kids commit for three, four years out. But I think we're probably two years away from you being able to look at a line chart and seeing a logo next to essentially, you know, Three fourths of, of what's on. Yeah, there, I love that know? they do that. By the way, yeah. it's very cool. I, for to let people know what you're talking about when they hand out the lines at 
games, you can see the team that's drafted and they put their logo right yeah. next to the name. It's really cool. It's impressive. Yeah, it's very impressive. Um, well, let's talk about this upcoming season and the team we can expect on the ice. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your incoming players, the new, mm-hmm. the new guys, and you can divide it into two categories: the the transfer portal players and sure. then the incoming freshmen. Well, the, the transfers we, we did very well. We did very well and, and, and addressed the the biggest area of concern I had with our team last year was we were just simply too easy to play against. You know, we we had some skill, uh, and and we were really built our foundation and, and the most successful teams we've had at this level. We're just in your face. We were physical. We were not fun to play against. Nobody looked forward to playing us. Last year, we didn't have that. We were very injured. As you guys know, the last two-thirds of the season, we had more man games missed than the last four seasons combined. Wow. And I think a lot of that has to do with a mindset. We felt like we were kind of on our heels, just a little bit too small, a little bit too light, and and didn't really have an identity that, that, that has given us success. So we went out and addressed that with – a kid like Brian Chambers, who who's in his fifth year, he's a 25 year old senior. He's 6'2", 205 pounds, sixty percent on faceoffs, hunts pucks, goes to the cage hard, just does the little things that that we mm. didn't have enough of last year. Tyler Gratton, um, who was uh, the alternate captain at Penn State, another 6'2", 215 pound power forward, flies up and down the ice, physical. Those two guys alone give us back the identity that we were looking for. Uh, and then you had a kid like Alex Young, who's probably the best goal scorer that went into the portal. He was. He had 21 goals at Colgate last year. He's a San Jose pick. Um, and he is one hell of a college hockey player. He's very, very good. So we, we really like what we added up front. Some really good depth and in, in, in size on the back with Kate Alami, who's six foot six um, <laughs> out of Boston College on You and Bill teams. Armstrong are doing <laughs> the same game plan here. So he, you know, that he gives us the size six, and six. difficulty to play against. And he, he had a good year at BC last year. Um, and he's six, six and he can move, he can skate. So he, he gives us a dimension. We didn't have Brandon Tabak in another fifth year kid from Yale, smart, cerebral, hard to play against elite puck mover and, and skates like the wind. So those five guys, we got older, we got bigger, we got tougher, we got instant leadership. Um, they're coming here for the right reasons. They're coming here because they know we can win and they want to take us back to an NCAA tournament in our last year as an independent. We have nine freshmen, nine freshmen um, that uh, that are all coming in. And, and, and what we did with this class was really went out and looked for guys that, you know, could give us that identity back in a lot of ways. And they're all hard skill guys and, and, and can play up and down a lineup. Uh, the two guys, I'm excited about all of them, but the two guys that I'm really excited about, uh, one's Kyle Smolin. He was a captain in Fargo last year, was a 50-point guy in the USHL, which which is tough to do, but he's a hard skill guy. He can play down the middle. He can play on the wing. He can be on our third line, our second line, our fourth line. Um, he, just, he just plays hard, and he's not fun to play against. And then another really dynamic player is Anthony Dowd, who, who's going to really add a lot of um uh offense from our 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 our, you know blue line um he was on the chicago steel he's a young kid he's only in 04 but he's ready for college hockey he led the steel in points for all all their d-men last year which as you guys know is a is a a tremendous organization with Mm -hmm. tons of talent so doubter came to us and and could have gone anywhere he wanted and and we were lucky enough to get him so you know there's other guys that we're really excited about that are here to fill a role but we love our depth. We love our size. We love what we what we were able to fix the holes that we thought we, we had, and and we're excited to get to work. Of course, you talked about all the guys coming in through the transfer portal. Mm-hmm. Are there any guys going out the other way? Is that a fear that you've got to figure out a way to retain these guys, or are you seeing guys once they're here, they're here? I think I think you know obviously a few guys went in, but the guys that went in were guys that knew that the playing time would be scarce, and they're looking for more playing time. So you lose those guys, and in the today's landscape, that's what's nice about the portal is a kid that feels like they're stuck and they're not getting what they want, or, or you know, they want more somewhere else. They have the liberty to do do that, right, and the flexibility now to do it. But we haven't really lost, you know, and certainly no disrespect to guys that have gone in, but we have not lost anybody. To yeah, because the guys you mentioned, you're losing teams are losing captains and yes. guys that are playing big minutes in big situations. We're not, we're not losing those guys, right? We're not losing those guys, and it, what what the portal does is it challenges. Why I like it so much, it challenges coaches to um, be honest. It challenges coaches to to live up to their end of the bargain and live up to their word. When they recruit a kid, 
on what it's going to be like when those kids are inside your program. And if you see mass exoduses, which you do in some programs, it, you know, you got you to gotta wonder if what's happening, mm -hmm. right? And it hasn't happened here. I don't think it will because we are honest. We treat our kids the right way. Um, and, uh, and, and, and we're a program that is attracting kids from other programs because kids talk, right? Sometimes your best recruiters are your players and certainly they're not, they're not recruiting for you, but right. kids talk, right? And, and if kids in our program are getting a positive experience and being treated the right way, maybe guys they play junior with or wherever are going to ask them about what their experiences are. And that helps you retain so, and, and track guys. Because I, I, I go back, and I, and I think that was a really good point to make. Because it's okay for a kid to go, "Hey, I'm I'm an ASU, I'm on the ASU program, but I got to get out." Because uh, that was me in college. Yeah. Like I didn't play. Yeah. I, I sat in section 101 on most games. And right. I and if you as a coach can go, you know what? It's better for you go find a place to play. Yep. That shows to me that that's what I would have wanted to hear. Yep. You, go find a place that fits you better, as opposed to hey, you're the best player leading our team in scoring, and you want to leave because it sucks here. Yeah. That's bad. So I, I appreciate you making that comment. That it does. I always thought of the portal as being a negative. Guys are jumping out, but it does give guys. They don't have. There are other programs yeah. out there. Where they may be able to and the, the old rule was if you transferred, you sat out a, a year, year. Yeah. and nobody wanted to do that. Now you can play right away. Yeah. So if a kid comes in my office and says, hey, what's my role going to be? They're going to get an honest answer. And if they don't like what they hear, then we help them find a new place That's to great. go. You know, and, and it's picking really up the phone that. and calling other coaches and trying to find them uh, a new home. We have um, a lot of people in our chat with some great questions. And by the way, thank you for being here watching, chiming in. Be sure to hit the like button on this video. But um, I want to highlight this question from Kevin, um, who has a question directly to you. Coach would love to hear how or if football's Activate the Valley theme is flowing into hockey recruiting, given the NHL stars that are starting to come from the desert. Yeah, you know what? I think I think that certainly what Kenny's doing in in every way with our football program is is awesome. And he's he's what you see is what you get. It's it's genuine. His whole activate the valley and how passionate he is about the pitchfork in, in our university in every way is genuine. So we need to all piggyback that. And everybody knows football drives everything. He's gonna he's gonna do tremendous things on our program. So absolutely. And we, you know, we want to keep homegrown kids here. And I think we've done a really good job of that. Um, kids like Matthew Nice slipped away, you know, but we didn't have mullet. We didn't have the <laughs> NCHC. Yeah. And Maddie works out with our guys every day right now, you know, and there's no hard feelings there. We're proud of what he's done with his career and, and what he's going to continue to do with his career being a local guy. But, um, we, uh, we feel like we, we've done a really good job keeping guys here and the best players now that, that grow up here, they have a reason to dream about being a Sun Devil now, right? They, mm -hmm. it, where Josh Doan never grew up dreaming of being an Arizona state Sun Devil. Right. So Matthew Nice never grew up dreaming of that. So now kids that are growing up playing hockey here, whether they're an NHL kid's uh, you know, son or, or whatever, player son or not, like when they go to a game of mullet and the experience they get as a fan and, 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 and they see what it means to be a Sun Devil hockey player, we expect local kids to really want to stay here and be a part of it. And, and certainly, you know, we're going to go after them hard and continue to. Yeah, the same way like kids from Minnesota and North Dakota, you know, like to. Yeah. No, that's right, and you, you have to build it. So yeah. It goes right back to the theme of be the tradition. Yeah. You, yeah. If you want to be the tradition, you have to have the tradition to look at and emulate and be a part of that. It, it's it, I, I I've said this about ASU hockey since, and we've had this conversation. So I'm not speaking on school. You really you practice what you preach when it comes to ASU. I mean, you literally are. You bleed, you know, maroon and gold. It's it's. It is. It's inspiring to listen to you talk about it. And the kids in the Valley, I know it's not like, and I don't want to hear people going as well. It's not Minnesota. They don't have thousands. I know they don't. They don't have thousands of kids playing. But if they get one or two and they're really, really good, instead of them going away, they have something to dream about here. And it's it's, it's the exciting. future here is it, it, kind of like we talk about the Coyotes. There is a future and it's exciting and you just have that hope for what's going to come. So I, I just... I don't really have a question there other than to say thank you for, for building all of that for us here, that 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 desire to be a part of something. Yeah, and, it, and I appreciate that. It, it's it's a it's a realistic light at the end of a tunnel for a kid playing youth hockey in our community to attain, right? The NHL, you can't say that about yeah. it, right? But you like kids can you can you can be a college hockey player, right? And we want kids that are playing for the junior coyotes and the junior sun devils. Uh, to dream about playing for us one day, yeah. you know, and, and I think we're, we're there. 
where I think we're there when when kids go to games and they see us beat Minnesota in overtime at Mullet, you know, and 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 we have more of those moments and more of those milestone, you know, th- that we achieve. It, it's going to happen. All right, we're going to get into some goalie talk. <laughs> But Minnesota. you know what they need if you are recruiting kids to Arizona? You, I know what you need. You need sunglasses. You got to have a sunny shady place. Race. You need shady race. And you know what? <laughs> like one of my favorite things in hockey with social media is the walk-in photos. Oh, buddy. And like AC hockey, there's some. Fire the walk-ins. I'll, I'll say this. There's some drip there. There's there some drip. There you go. Here we are again. Um, <laughs> and when it's sunny here, you need to keep your eyes protected. And that's why our partners, Shady Rays, are here for you. Not only are they stylish, they're affordable. And, like, the customer service of Shady Rays is so phenomenal. Um, if you br- get your Shady Rays and sit on them and break them the day you get them, they'll send you a new pair. No questions asked. If you get them and you say, you know what, these aren't for me, I want a different color, send them back, they'll replace them free 30 days. That's what I love about Shady Rays because they stand behind their product. We all have them. We absolutely we love them. And exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com and use code PHNX for 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. All right. Um, so this is Greg Powers. First time in our office. But Where was he last time? He was at the Four Peaks Four A Peaks. Street Pub, um, which I know you and you, we all enjoyed. And, you we know, did. we gave him the tour of our office, the Four Peaks fridge. That yeah. fridge right there is only Four Peaks. It is not a food fridge. Um, and that's what's, you know, one of the perks of working at PHNX. But one of the perks of living in Arizona is anywhere you go, you can buy Four Peaks. Target, Walmart, Circle K. Get it on tap everywhere. Safeway, Fries everywhere it's yep. it's everywhere yeah and every restaurant you go it's on tap and of course you can swing by the four peaks a street pub in tempe if you're heading out to games at mullet this season whether to see the coyotes or sun devil hockey um the a street pub is right walking down the distance. Ra- yeah you can well, walk you can uber it's like a two minute maybe not uber. the first month of the season you can no, walk because it's still it's a little toasty hot. but you could walk from there you, yeah check it can you out do those scooters you could but i would recommend I that you're shouldn't. not under the influence. yeah that's not me <laughs> check out at four peaks brew or at four peaks pub to keep up with the latest arizona's home temporary you must be 21 or older to drink four peaks and please drink responsibly all right you knew we were going to get around to goalies at some point here <laughs> yeah pd and me here may, 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 I, may, I, may, I, may i leave i might have some eligibility left <laughs> say, five nine somebody posted no. by stats i know by the way. That, was, that, that was hurtful <laughs> Especially because that one season is incorrect, but I can't get hockey DB to change. Can we? Can we? Can, can we go, Craig? Can we both complain about our hockey DB stats, even though should. they're really irrelevant? Because yeah, I do all the time. I they're mean, wrong. Like both of us as goaltenders, they're wrong. Irrelevant, My stats are wrong. When Joey Decord left, it was sort of a trial and error, yep. trying to find a number one guy. Yep. Sure looks like you found one. Curious what you saw last year from TJ Semptonfelter. And what's ahead for him? He was he was tremendous. He 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 wore down the last fourth of the year, but we we really just kept pushing him, and and he wanted to continue to be pushed, even though we all knew he was wearing down with all the injuries that we had. Um, what he went through last year, and the adversity that he went through, and some of the the highs and the lows, he's going to be really good this year. He 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 he, he was never a starter at this level. Yeah, you know, people forget that. So he was thrown in the fire. Um, did a did a, a, a tremendous job. You know, essentially at, at Northeastern, he was playing behind the best goalie, maybe college hockey's ever seen. Yeah. But you can argue a top five college hockey goalie ever in Devin Levi, who's yeah. probably going to contend to be a starter in Buffalo this year. <laughs> oh, so, oh, John, yeah. Sean. Sean's, Sean's a Bums, Sabres fan. Native, yeah. like, native <laughs> Buffalo, you yeah. know. But when Devin went to the Olympics and what TJ did at, at the Beanpot, those yeah. he, he really had, you know, a, a very minimal, you know, uh, you know, proof of concept, so to speak. And and what he did here was was unbelievable and. Um, our depth is really good. We have Gibson Homer who redshirted last year. Mm. He's six five. He's athletic. He played for the national development team. <laughs> a really Steel. big guy. So we we are we are we are really really excited about our goaltending duo that that they're going to give us. And you'll see Gibby play. He, he's going to mm. play this year. Speaking of goalies, you'll no no longer have Eddie Lack around. Yep. Which you know he was on the show recently. It's good and bad. You know? <laughs> There'll be a lot a lot more quiet time without Eddie. Around. <laughs> I can tell you that. We'll send him this clip. Okay. Yeah. But you noted that Dana has worked with goalies in the past. You're also a former <laughs> goaltender. And you want to take on a greater role. Yeah. What does that mean? Because the goaltending position has evolved a lot. Yeah. So what sort of study does that entail for you as a coach to to get up to speed well, again? Or do you feel you're there? I, I think I'm there. You know, I, I've I've um 
I've paid very close attention to, you know, we, we had a, a obviously jo when Joey Decord was with us, his dad, Brian Decord is yes. one of the, one of the, you know, foremost goaltending gurus, I guess you could call them in the world, you know? And so I learned a ton from Brian yeah. and continue to talk to Brian, you know, today. And, and when Joey was with us, our goaltending coach was Andrew Matheson, who is now our director of hockey operations and video coach. So Mellon, as we call him, because he's got the biggest head on the planet. Um, <laughs> Mellon is is a tremendous Ouch. resource as well. Mellon can't directly coach anybody because he's in an ops video coach role. Yeah. But Mellon's also somebody that we have on our staff that was Joey's goaltender coach when he was here, and he's very good at what he does. And Dana worked with the goalies at Colgate. So you have to, you, you know, every coach that added a third coach had to make a decision. You saw a lot of guys add goalie guys. And then for us, in my opinion, because of the resources that we have between myself, Mellon, Dana's work with, with Carter Gielander at Colgate, for me, adding a Dana Borges that could do that in addition, move the needle for us more than just adding a quote-unquote goalie guy. Sure. In a perfect world, though, should college hockey have a goalie coach? Yes. And and now, for the most part, that they do, you yeah. know, I'm, um, and, and we do, you know, but, but – uh, in the past, it's always been a volunteer coach. And yeah. so, you know. It, you know it, what we, I'm saying, though. You don't have yeah, to get a guy that has no, to do other things. Absolutely. Wouldn't it be it nice? should. And, and, yeah. and we, we actually went to legislation to add two coaches. And so everybody thought that, it, you know, the NCAA was going to gonna approve two. And, mm -hmm. and then every year solved. You get your goalie coach. You get your third countable recruiting coach. Yeah. And you have a real staff, right, yeah. that, that, that you can really – operate a, a first class program with so hopefully mm. we'll get there we're uh, beggars can't be choosers we're happy they at least let us add one yeah Eddie doesn't want to leave his real estate business though. no mm -hmm. he makes more money than all our old staff combined <laughs> he never buys us a beer takes <laughs> us all for like, nothing look at those goofy yeah, videos for twitter too. Too. craig and i our application the first day will be skate save yeah. and then we'll do two pass all, stacks all like, the referrals we've given yeah. them you know like exactly. i was the first I uh, my house in Scottsdale that we bought, we were the first client for Eddie Lack. Seriously, oh, wow. very that's, first that's one. a good fact yep. right there. I like my that. wife looked at me like, really, we're gonna use this guy? Yeah, like, just he'll he'll do a good job. And now he's 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 great at what he does. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's great at what he does. If, Skate saves. Wow. Yep. If PD that's, that's, was yeah, if PD was on the ice, he'd be screaming, "Stand up! Stand up! <laughs> God damn it! The reverse VH, get up! <laughs> if I see another six foot six goalie giving one up over his ear, I'm, I'm gonna you. go lose my mind. I'm with you. Isn't Sorry. it amazing though how much the position has evolved? Like we're, yeah. we're talking, well, we're joking about us. skate saves, right? Look at yeah. the three of us. Like, hey, why don't you open up your leg and six, get yourself five. completely yeah. out of position? Are we six five? Right? Combined. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Like we couldn't play if we went down. Yeah. We couldn't. <laughs> We're not tall enough. So anyway, the, the <laughs> positions evolved. Sorry. Oh boy. Yeah, All right. Does. Let's transition into talking about Mullet Arena a little bit. Um, last season was the first season. You've mentioned that there's some, you know, new branding and team areas, etc. What can you tell us that maybe is new this season that either for you guys in in the locker room or also and also for the fan experience at Mullet? Well, I, from a fan experience standpoint, I think just, you know, ASU really had never put on a professional production for a hockey game. You couldn't yeah. do that at Oceanside. Yeah. You could play some music, and that was about it, right? You couldn't do hype videos and intro videos and intermission stuff. So I think the, the, the trial by fire that our operations people went through and then being able to go and watch a Coyote game in our arena and see how it's supposed to be done was really, really educational. And I think so the fan experience, we expect to be even better this year um, from an operational standpoint, because ASU did learn as they went how to put on a, a professional production for a hockey game. So I'm excited about that. Um, for us, Mullet, like, you know, last year was a whirlwind. We, we didn't have any of our training camp there. It was all at Oceanside. We went on a 10-day road trip to Bemidji and Duluth. We came back, we unloaded on a Sunday night, and four days later, we're playing our first game. So it was a, it was a, it, it was weird. You know, it didn't feel like home for for a good portion of the season because we were just kind of playing catch up nonstop. Where now we've had a full off season, we've really put a stake in the ground. The majority of our team is here and have been here, so we've been able to develop an off season culture in a facility which we've never been able to do, and it just feels really good going to work every day when you have that to to go to. Um, you mentioned some of it, obviously, with the, the operation staff, but just from a team perspective, obviously, you go from Oceanside to Mullet. It's a huge step up. Was there something that maybe when you 
got into mullet you just didn't expect, weren't ready for, didn't realize that now this season going into your second full season at mullet that you say, okay, we're ready for this. We're prepared for this. Everything that comes with it, literally everything from, you know, the, the entrance to, to the offices, to the staff that works at mullet that is, is constantly cleaning stuff and, <clears throat> You know, we, we're used to, you know, we had names for the rats at Oceanside that ran across our coach's room, you know, so we, you know, now you have a, a janitorial staff and, and it, it just, everything that comes. Why did you never tell me that by the way, at all the times I was writing these stories, <laughs> just everything. So we weren't, we, you know, everything that we took on was so new and, and, and was kind of, we were starstruck for a long time and now, but now it feels like home and, um, and, and, and we have 26 home games this year. You mentioned teams came in with a different mindset into that arena oh, yeah. at Oceanside too, right? Huge adjustment because at Oceanside, they would walk in and be like, where the hell am I? <laughs> yeah. You know, what is this place? And we have to play here. And we were really good there. We were very hard to beat. So now to develop that home ice advantage, we've got to flip the script and the mindset because teams, what we found last year, and we had a good record of mullet, not nearly what we needed to, to, to get to a tournament, but still a winning record. Um, they're excited to be there. They walk in and they know it's a big stage. They know they're going to play in front of 5,000 people. They know that the NHL is there. So there's some some sizzle to to our hmm. our home home arena that the teams come in and they're they're excited to be there. So that was an adjustment that that we'll be ready for this year. And I think you talked about it at the NHL level too. We, we've said it on many shows that the mullet magic was real, and yeah. I, and I think it was that you caught teams off guard a little yeah. bit. And I think. With a team that's hard to play against, you talk about size and strength and physical. Does that help Mullet Magic roll over into the college game? I think so. I think the Mullet Magic for the Coyotes was was very. You could correlate the, the, the exact same way that Oceanside worked for us. You know, it's not a typical NHL arena. It's small. It's different. It's unique. It's not what those guys are used to playing in. They come in, they play, they leave, and the Coyotes got used to it and made it their their. You know, the, the obstacle is the way. It's a great book. It's what we have our guys. It teaches you how to teach, teaches you how to turn adversity into advantage, right? And what everybody perceived in the public as this huge obstacle and all this adversity for the Coyotes was their advantage, yeah. right? And they turned it into their advantage. And that's what, you know, they have one of the best coaches in the world that I think understood that early. And 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 they were great at home. So we have to do that now, yeah. right? We, and, and we did it at Oceanside. And um, now we have to, to, to do that at Mullet and we will. You guys got anything else? For I do want to say we talked. We sat here and talked to you a year ago, and we were saying what's a reasonable expectation for this team going into last season, and we talked about the NCAA tournament a year ago. But with all the injuries that this yeah. team had, and you, you had guys from the the the, the, the club team playing yeah. eventually for this team, so clearly that wasn't didn't come to pass. What are your expectations coming into 23-24? Realistic. It, it, it is. It, it's an NCAA tournament, right? And, and and we will we will be deep enough and experienced enough and and with all the home games that we mm-hmm. have, yeah. the expectation is 24? 26. 26, 26 Sorry, home games, bad. 27 if you include the exhibition game. So, you know, it, it it's it's a great opportunity, you know, and I think most importantly our guys have to understand this is the end of chapter 1. You know, so so wearing that like a badge of honor that that they're going to do, mm-hmm. being the last independent season. Um, you know, if you would have told me when we started our program that that we can get the three NCAA tournaments in eight seasons, I think I'd take it. Yeah. Right, and and so we we're really hell bent on making that happen. That's our goal. That's our expectation. Well, this whole conversation gets me really excited for the ASU hockey season. And we all know this, that I'm a wildcat. And Caleb, I saw your comment earlier. I will not acknowledge it. Um, But (laughs) I do really like cheering for Sun Devil hockey. I think it's really exciting. Um, I hope that one day, like we talked about at the beginning, that there can be you know, a, a more of a Western Conference. I'd love to see U of A become D1 and have that. I think it'd be fantastic. It's I really do. We all would. Yeah, the exhibition game is going to be a ton of fun. Yep. Um, But... If you're, if you're just, you know, if this is getting you excited and you're ready to rep your team, listen, it's August. Like, we're almost here in collegiate sports season. Um, FOCO has you covered. I'm actually on the FOCO website right now. I sent some FOCO stuff to uh, Sean DePause, the producer. They were Buffalo Bills y- you loungewear were pants. You FOCO stuff like I know. every other day. I know. Because <laughs> all the ads school. are Buffalo Bills stuff. What do you think of those old school sweatpants? You <laughs> I love them. Yeah. Old school sweatpants that look like the players' football pants. So, I love. So I'm looking right now. I got... 
ASU <gasps> like straw hats, bucket yes. hats. Um, think ahead, Christmas ornaments, yeah. flip flops, slippers, tank tops. Like I'm, I'm just getting scrolling that bucket and hat. scrolling and no scrolling. No tank tops. No. This no. this was a woman's tank top. Okay, that's yes. okay. Um, so yeah. you can head to foco.com, check all this great stuff out for yourself. They also have wildcat stuff they also have everything for whatever sports team you love foco has your back so check it out and of course we always mention it but mo much of our set decoration is courtesy of our friends at foco so get the best gear around by visiting foco.com that's f-o-c-o.com and use the code phnx and for all non-presale items use promo code phnx for 10 percent off and last but not least we want to invite you to become a diehard if you're not already um tons of great perks to becoming a diehard Die Hard only hangouts that we're going to start doing once a month. Once if you a month. were there last week. Actually, it was a week ago today. It was, was it? phenomenal um, with that PD led. That was just for diehards. Craig's been dropping intel in the Discord for diehards only. Yeah, <laughs> yeah don't get don't get yourself banned for spreading secrets. Mm -hmm. um, you also get a free shirt or hat every year at sign up. You get 20% off merchandise, 20% off events. Um, there's just the perks go on and on and on. Um, so join our family. It's a and great more to come, time right, to become a diehard. A lot more to come inside a lot the diehard club. Yeah. Yeah. There might, there might be something talking. later today. Yeah, we're, we're talking Somebody exclusive interview content. We're yeah. talking exclusive PD puck talks. Like yep. it, it's only going to go up from here. So now is the best time to become a diehard. And of course, check out phnxlocker.com to grab your gear. We're both rocking the PHNX locker today. Um, and there's also some Sun Devil shirts in there as well so yep. for all of you asu fans watching today anything else before we get out of here <sighs> i'm good any, thank you any, for do, anything thank you else for doing you want this, you want to say to the the people before we wrap up no i just i you know last year was incredible a mullet with the support that we 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 received um we're looking forward to it this year and with all the home games and always fun coming on you yeah guys it, are a blast. I, i'll say this about mullet if you haven't been go Go to no, a game no. there, and by the way, because I know this because my son goes there. You, they have the 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 community rink attached to the big mullet rink. You can actually go skating there, and general skating and stuff is available. So if you want to feel like you're you're a part of the ASU hockey community, go put a pair of skates on and jump on the mullet community rink. Uh, get on the website and check out what nice times are. Yeah, absolutely. Get out to a game at Mullet. Go support Sun Devil hockey. It's going to be a great season. Coach Powers, thank you so much. Thank we really you appreciate it. Always your time. a pleasure. Everybody here in the chat, hit the thumbs up button, hit the like button, subscribe to the PHNX Sports YouTube channel. We'll actually be back again tomorrow with another guest, Newell Brown, Newell will be Brown. joining us um, tomorrow. That's Great guy. at 11 a.m. A good so. coach, too. <laughs> kind of a little quiet, though. We'll see. B big week for coaches on this show. Um, so we're li really looking forward to that one. Be sure to subscribe to the PHNX Sports YouTube channel, and you can follow all of us. On Twitter, at S. Peters Hockey, at Leah Merrill, at ASU Coach Powers, at Craig S. Morgan, at Sean underscore DePaz. I think it's called X now. Just oh, saying. sorry. And you can follow <laughs> the, the show at PHNX mm. underscore Coyotes. We appreciate your support, everyone. Thank you again, Coach Powers. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday, and we will see everybody tomorrow.